front of the old Wine Gap church where my auntie Anne got married in 1961, I think. I was an altar boy with my brother John. The church is no longer here, but there is a fantastic graveyard which I'm going to take you into. It's pouring with rain, but I don't care. This is just a beautiful place. And all along this wall you see now, all the men used to stand with their caps on after mass, talking to each other. We'd come out, we'd sort of head for the shop, which used to be just here, Dye, Dye Welsh as it was called, and used to get bread and that kind of thing. But uh, now I'm heading up into the graveyard. This is one of the most beautiful graveyards I've been in anywhere. And you might see why. I'm going to take you up to a particular monument of a soldier. And I'm fascinated by this soldier, why he's buried in this graveyard. But uh, up at the top, where those trees are up there, that's called the grotto. And uh, it's very wet, but I might be able to take you around a little bit. Uh, see the site of the actual church, which has completely been erased, knocked down, should I say. Some graves, names of people I remember. Robbie Jackman. Uh, there, for example. These are all names that I knew as a child. And it's, uh, it's lovely. It's lovely. It's the history. It's part of my history and my brother's history. My mum's got a grave marked out here when she goes. And judging from the way she is at the moment, that could be quite some time. So I'm glad to say I'm walking across where the church was. And uh, I think this might even have been where the altar was. But when we were kids, you know, we were brought up Catholics. No choices. We'd come into Mass here, and I think all the men were on the right-hand side or the left-hand side. Anyway, the women were on the other side, and you'd walk into the church, and people would know you were over on holiday, and they'd all turn around and look at you. It was very odd. Very odd. I have to say, it's six minutes past eight, and the light's still great, so... We're on the the western part of Europe, I suppose. We're getting the best light. Uh, Rossinani is a place just outside Wangap. My mum lived in a place called Rossinani Court. And over here, there's a big monument a big monument. Be merciful, O Lord, to the souls of all who are interred in this graveyard. Eternal light shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. There we are. Beautiful mosaic. I think that's been restored. Some of this has been restored because it was to decaying somewhat, a lot of it, and they uh, had a, a government scheme where youngsters come and helped people to restore the, uh, this is the new part of the graveyard, and I think this is where my mum's uh, one been marked out. My uncle Paddy, Lowry Shea, they called him, he was a grave digger, and he uh, was a big character in... Uh, in Wangaf and uh, there we are there's my auntie Mary uh, her husband Peter Murphy Kildrummy Wangaf lovely man hated the bosses really did hate the bosses but he was on his own he wasn't really in a union there was no union he worked for the local companies and he had to compromise a bit to keep his job but he hated them and he was never afraid to get into a political argument with anybody in my Peter Murphy. A fucking dare man. 
and a lovely man. And he used to say, now that's a fact. Everything used to be punctuated with, now that's a fact. Yeah. My Uncle Peter. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Mary was in with uh, my mum today. This is the, the relatively new part of the graveyard. Now, let's go up to where this strange monument is. I've tried to research it and find out, was he a First World War soldier? But, uh, better do it, because the light's fading. Over to the right here, you've got the grotto. My mum used to come up walking here a lot before she wasn't able to. She still gets around on her walking frame, mind. And she has to be told to use it because she forgets sometimes and then we had the spectacle of her falling over. Here we are. Here's this place. It's coming up to it now. And it's like centre, centre of the graveyard. It dominates the graveyard really, albeit behind some trees now, but it's, uh, it's got a, a dominant place. I don't understand it who this person was. Now, here we are. Michael Francis Morris. New Rath House, Waterford, who lost his life in France in June 1916. May he rest in peace. Amen. It sounds like he was English. I really don't understand this. And I've, I've been on to the, the local uh, council in Waterford to try and find out who he was. But I've come up with a blank so far. And yet we've got this beautiful monument to this person who gets pride of place in Wine Gap Cemetery. I don't understand it. Yet. Cross and everything. So he was, sounds like he might have been a Catholic. Because this is a Catholic graveyard, I suppose. I don't know if there are... Yeah, no, I don't know about that. I think it's predominantly Catholic. But I think there are Protestant people here because we knew Church of Ireland people, for example. The Smiths of Frankfurt Road were... Uh, their um, Protestant uh, family. There's another graveyard. And I don't know what this one is. I've never really checked this one out. Nineteen nine, nineteen ten, Waterford. Again. He was a JP, David Highland, JP. Now there's another one on the other side as well. Uh, what is the connection with Waterford and Wine Gap? Why somebody as eminent as a JP, if you like, is interred in the family burial ground attached to the church. And this was erected to his memory, it says, oh, oh, I'm paraphrasing that bit because I can't read it very well. Look at these beautiful trees. Gorgeous place to come for a walk. And it's all been lovingly restored. All these walls here. And they're made out of uh, beautiful, kind of marble-like stone. And over there, you can see a house that is, which is in Wine Gap. Oh, here's the other one. This is another. Uh, if this is a Waterford person, I was. Ah, erected in loving memory of very reverend P.J. Hall, Cool Hill, the beloved pastor for 40 years of Blairsville, Pittsburgh where he died 29th of September, 1939, just after the Second World War started. My God. 
1934, in the 68th year of his age, requiescat in pace. Oh. Oh. The place is full of history, isn't it? Full of it. I never knew all this when I was a kid. Never knew these places, these graves. I don't even remember coming up the grotto. But I must have done with my mum, because she loved walking, so she would have been up here a lot. Here's more of the way these little rockeries have been done here in this stone. It's fantastic. My only disappointment is that the great mountain which looks over all this is shrouded in mist. Schlievnamon. It's over in the distance there and it's one of my great joys to see that wonderful mountain of which there are a number of songs and tunes been written. But it's not going to reveal itself. And over there is a place called Karagnagopal. And again, that's shrouded in mist. Karag means rock. Not sure what Nagopal means. I'll have to ask my cousin when I get down to the house in a minute. But look at this, this little grotto road along here, along the side of the cemetery, the back of the cemetery. Just beautiful. There's fields all around. Another monument. I don't know who this one is to. I don't know who's put the chair up here either, but uh, let's see who's this. Oh, this is just um, a statue to the, uh, the Great Redeemer, I think, allegedly. Yeah, I don't think it's a memorial to anybody. There's a, like a cairn there, see that? All these little things revealed. I think there's been clearance done. You can see there's been clearance done because this is very much overgrown and I think these things have been revealed. Certainly, I don't remember seeing that cairn there or what looks like a cairn. I don't remember seeing that when I last came up here last year. Fascinating. And yes, our old bovine friends there. Probably wondering what's that idiot doing up here at this time of the night. But there you go. Just come round the back here. We'll go all the way round. Lots of memories, really, for me, coming back to this part of the world. Selfish, really, because, uh, you know, you, get, you can get yourself worked up a bit and because of what you might have lost, but I prefer to say what you might have experienced, <laughs> because I'm not sure I lost anything. I came here as a child, and I did exciting things. I thought. I used to have this fantasy world where I drove around my granny's house in a fantasy tractor and when it rained it spoiled it because I had to go inside and listen to the adults and be told what to do. Serve God and be happy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to have to try and, I hope the weather's good tomorrow because I'm going to come out here and hope that Slevenamon will appear from the mist. And if there was uh, a massacre in uh, 1798, the year that the United Irishmen rose up, it was a big, big year. We had the Battle of Vinegar Hill, which was the last great battle of that uprising. But one of the actions that happened that year happened on Slevenamon, and there were some people from this parish who were involved in that, and there was a massacre on the mountain.
And one young lad, he was only 15 or so, was saved. For some reason, the commander of the unit that was uh, chasing these rebels, this United Irishman, he decided to save him. And they're buried, those people who were murdered, who were massacred, are buried in a, a village church in a place called Kilamery, which is not very far from here. Look at this little seat, like a summer house kind of thing. I don't know what you call it, I'm not very good on the, uh, the proper names. There is a name for one of these. And it's even got, if you look on the floor here, it's almost like a sundial effect. It is a sundial, I think. Yeah. Some beautiful architecture. And here we look at this bit. It's like, like a bridge. We're coming up. The wall rises like a bridge. It's really, really spectacular, I think. And you get these great Gloria in excelsis Deo. We used to sing that at high mass. Gloria in excelsis Deo. All that stuff. Yep. Yeah. I can't deny it. It was there. Although I may have given it the big E in terms of belief. Look at this down here, these steps. Now these steps were, uh, yeah, at the back of the church. I do kind of remember them when I was a kid. <laughs> I was always very nervous though, as I said earlier, coming to church, coming to meet people. I was a bit shy, I think, and I was a bit, I don't know, <laughs> reticent. And yet, when I look back at it now, this it gives you a strange feeling, doesn't it? It must be the same for us all, you know, wherever we are from. Certain memories. Look at that view of the churchyard from here. There is another churchyard that really excited me, just for the sheer beauty of it, and that's at Ilfracombe, where I taught. And the only reason I ever went in there was because one of my students, one of our students died, a young woman called Christina Higgins. She was only 16. Lovely girl, such a brave girl. She taught me a lot about facing your own mortality and the end. She was absolutely fantastic, the way she dealt with her own death. And she's buried in that graveyard and it looks over the sea over to the west, you know, over to Ireland, probably. Uh, or, no, maybe Wales, actually. It's over the Channel more than the, over to Ireland, because Ireland's more to the, to the, uh, the west again. But, beautiful graveyard. Well worth a visit. Yeah, it's not that I go around lots of graveyards, I have to say. I think it's just the fact that uh, certain graveyards are in impressed on my brain coming down to the uh, the light again it's almost like when you come into a football stadium you see that grass and it's uh, not shocking but it's vivid and exciting and even though this is a graveyard it has real beauty, real beauty, I love this place, always come to visit it when I come to Wine Gap. I can remember being in the church, just, we're back at the weather church, the site of the church is, this green area was, the, um, and my uncle Jimmy, he would say, now don't look behind, I'll be up in the gallery and I'll be watching. So we had to, me and my brother John, we had to get in the pews and face the front all the time, you know, fidgety children. Can you imagine it? And there's the church bell over there. I think it was called St. Nicholas's Church, if I'm not mistaken.
Um, this graveyard holds a lot of stories. There's lots of tragedy here, and I mean real tragedy. There are some children buried here, and their mother. They're my cousin's family. There's her adopted daughter, Sharon, and their two children. Their two children. And Christmas two years ago now, just before my mother became ill, two and a half years ago, literally on Christmas Eve, she was murdered. And then the person who murdered her went back and burned her to make it look like a, an accident. And the children were asphyxi asphyxiated. And uh, it turned out that the guy who did it lived in the street, lived in Wine Gap, and uh, there was a huge court case and trial, and my cousin Nancy, my first cousin, she never got over it, she's never got over it, her and her husband, Christy. Strangely enough, I met her adopted son, David, last night, I'd never met him before, Sharon's brother. This is my granny's grave. Granny Shea. John O'Shea, her father, her husband, sorry, my mum's dad, died 27th of December 1946. Great musician and singer, my mum often told me. His wife, Elizabeth O'Shea. Their daughter, Peggy, who died in childbirth with Patrick, who survived, and is now a singer of some note in Ireland. He, he tours Ireland, England, America, anywhere the Irish are, and they like that kind of country style of music. But uh, it's not my music, but uh, I appreciate what he's doing. Uh, and there's pa Patrick, Jimmy and Paddy, the the two boys, the two eldest boys, Paddy, Lowry, known to everybody around here as Lowry. He died in 1985, that long ago, my God. And he was a great man, big, big man. And one year, during the, uh, the troubles in the, uh, the 20s, the black and tans turned up. In, this was a, a rebel area, and the black and tans turned up, and they sat this seven-year-old boy on the pier of a gate and threatened to kill him. My mum says it did him. He never got over it. He never got over it. It did his head in, as they say. And here's the O'Shea grave. My mum won't be buried here because there's too many people in it already. So she's got another place marked out, and she's going to be next to my auntie, Mary, who wants to be... She's already chosen a place, my mum, but uh, she's on her own in, in that part of the graveyard. You'd think it wouldn't make any difference, but it does. And uh, my auntie, Mary, she said she had a place, and she's going to want my mum to be next to her, so that's the way it's going to happen. And this is in loving memory of Johnny Hayes of Kildrummy. Johnny was my cousin Nancy's dad. And Peggy was my mum's eldest sister, whose husband he was. And uh, she died in 1955 with Patrick. Uh, it, he survived, as I said. Pat Hayes. Yep. So that's all part of our family history. And there's stories to tell, which I won't. But uh, in this graveyard, and I don't know where it is. I haven't been to the grave of the children. But uh, somewhere along here, it's terribly tragic. It's the family 